if we are live on YouTube as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, just give me a second here. I'm just trying to push the video to YouTube. Yeah, I think we are streaming on YouTube. Great. Uh, so with that note, uh, whether we, we are live on YouTube. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining in for today's session on electric vehicle powertrain sizing. That's a very exciting and interesting session always um, because it is hands-on where you involve in calculations uh, and uh, things like that. So it's just that you also have to be involving with the session. Uh, by the way, welcome all of you for today's session. Uh, just cutting out all the GAN that I could give you. So let's start the session directly by introducing the trainer. So today's session, as I said, it's on electric vehicle powertrain sizing. So this, this is a part of the vehicle body modeling. Mm -hmm. And this session is presented by Krishna, uh, who is our senior simulation engineer at Decibels Lab. So he takes care of a lot of activities on the uh, simulation environment, simulation toolboxes using uh, various simulation, 1D simulation modeling uh, toolboxes. So um, this session, we will, you will be learning the approach to size the components, but it, it is not everything, but you know, it is something that you can get started, all right? So with that note, I will hand over the session to you, Krishna, over to you, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Hello, people. Uh, welcome to session. Uh, like here, uh, like we'll start uh, dealing with the powertrain and like sizing of the powertrain components. Okay. So, yeah. So here, uh, like uh, there will be some approaches, or uh, like that has to be like strictly followed to, uh, like design or like to size the components of your powertrain. Okay. We can't simply just like go and get a motor or like go and get a battery and assemble and try the vehicle. So we should be knowing like, what are the uh, like actual uh, magnitudes uh, so that we can uh, make use to develop our power trip. Okay. So first uh, like we'll just look into the agenda. Okay. No. Yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Uh, please start recording. Oh, okay. I'll just start recording. Yeah. So, uh, like, we'll be dealing with, uh, like, course agenda here. So, we'll start with, uh, like, what are the requirements at the wheel side? Okay. Let me show it here. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the requirements at wheel side? Uh, let's say like, so in order to overcome uh, the resistive forces, all the stuff and like how we can estimate the resistive forces. So we should be knowing the value, right? Uh, like in order to, based on that, we have to size the components. Okay. So that uh, like we can consider them uh, in the vehicle body modeling. Okay. Where it involves only of like, uh, like longitudinal dynamics, which deals only with the uh, front and the back motion of your vehicle. We are not uh, cornering or like uh, lateral dynamics and uh, vertical. Okay. So, yeah. Here, uh, like all the, whatever the requirements at the wheel side, uh, it is done at the vehicle body level. And then, uh, like, we'll move to the transmission side. Okay. And then, uh, like we'll move to the here I have mentioned I think that like maybe like move to the motor side and the battery side. Oh yeah, let me take with that. Okay. Yeah. So battery and like a uh, motor. Okay. Uh, this is how like uh, the flow will take place. So to our, uh, like for our components modeling, uh, like we'll be following a wheel to well uh, analysis. Okay. Uh, getting to know what is required at the wheel side, uh, that is at the vehicle body side, and then going for sizing the components 
so let me be motor or the battery uh, powers okay yeah so first uh, like we'll start with the vehicle body side uh, that is nothing but your like longitudinal dynamics so i'll just go to that particular slide yeah here uh, like you can see that uh, like vehicle body and the uh, chassis okay whatever the the name here it suggested so we are just like assigning some forces uh, some kind of like resistive forces uh, against your vehicle motion let's say like if, if your vehicle is moving in this direction uh, these are some forces okay i will i will go through this what exactly the forces are for now uh, like we'll say that f here is nothing but your aerodynamic force uh, like r whatever the mission it is uh, respect to the rolling resistance and then uh, the grade uh, it is because of elevation or like something uh, inclination sorry yeah and yeah uh, these are some resistive forces which will be acting against your vehicle motion so considering uh, like balancing all the equations with help of like this particular basic equation that is f is equal to m into a will be like deriving all the uh, components here that may be respect to the aerodynamic force rolling force and the gradient force okay here uh, like f xf plus fxr that is nothing but your like total net force or uh, like don't worry about this suffix okay just consider like net force uh, from there like you are trying to subtract all these resistive forces okay uh, but in the wheel to wheel analysis uh, like we will be following the different approach uh, like that is f net equal to uh, like f arrow f rolling f grade okay plus acceleration force that is m into a okay that is nothing but your like acceleration yeah so here uh, like what i can say you might be thinking like acceleration force uh, like it it can't be like in the against your vehicle motion okay okay now uh, i'm getting sound issues just let me how about now uh, like am i audible you are audible okay yeah so yeah i'll just like continue with here here these are respect to the uh, like resistive forces where this will be like your traction force related term so we'll discuss like how we can like add with this and going for the final uh, getting to like total tractive force okay yeah so now uh, like we got to know like what are the forces acting on the vehicle okay we'll just like try to look into some deeper concepts so here uh, like with this figure we can just say that Uh, like aerodynamic force is going to contribute with more percentage compared to the other uh, like resistive forces okay some resistance uh, there will be again the like resistance in some drive train or like brake pads wheel hub or like again tire rolling for uh, tire rolling okay uh, like we we'll, we can like look into that uh, like how they are contributing and what are the parameters they are affecting uh, these forces okay there might be some parameters uh, like which is influencing uh, aerodynamic force uh, in the same way with respect to the tire force uh, like tire resistant force rolling force okay so we'll look into those parameters so first uh, like we'll start dealing with rolling resistance okay so here uh, like it's one of the resistive forces uh, like here we'll be dealing that uh, like what are the parameters affecting your 
ruling rationals. Okay. So if with this figure you can see that like most of the like you can say the affecting parameters like factors as I mentioned here. Uh, like one will be like tire pressure. Okay. And design of your tire. Weight uh, like includes on the size and the shape. Okay. And road surface. And weight of your vehicle. Material. Okay, and like some other. Okay, we'll just try to discuss some points. Yeah. So here, uh, like, if you consider like uh, how how could be the design of your tire can be like affecting a parameter, uh, like affecting parameter. Okay. So let's say like uh, some uh, like vehicle tire is of having some x uh, width. Okay, and some having like some y. We don't know the numbers. Uh, like right now, like we'll just keep it as variables. Okay. So here, uh, like you can see, like visually, you can say notice that like uh, this particular tire like has some uh, like a bigger yeah. width. Okay. So has uh, the bigger width, there will be like more contact patch with respect to the surface. Okay. This particular area. Uh, which will be like contact with the surface. Okay. Now, uh, like, if you consider uh, like lesser width, uh, like let's say like a smaller width of your tire, uh, like where will be like lesser area of will be in contact with the uh, surface, where uh, so that you can have like less contact. Okay, with that you can consider that uh, like one of the affecting parameter. Okay, higher the width will be like higher uh, contact patch and higher resistance. Okay, yeah. And this is like one of the parameter with respect to the design. And you might be like um, dealing with the CRR coefficient of rolling resistance. Okay, so. Uh, just give me a second. I'm getting like a no, lot of messages about why. Is it audible? Like, yeah, it's audible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is some sort of difference. This is okay. Yeah. So, here, uh, like. We'll be discussing about uh, CRR. So different surface and the uh, vehicle wheels. Okay, uh, different road surface will be like dealing with the different CRR values. So uh, like that has to be like taken care. Okay, higher the CRR value, like we'll be dealing with the higher rolling resistance. So we can look into the uh, relation between CRR and uh, force. Okay, that is resistive force. And as I was discussing about uh, like effect of material. Okay, uh, like material will be like one of the parameter which will be affecting the rolling resistance. Again, like uh, the different material with the different pressure, you can see how uh, the rolling resistance is. Uh, going to affect. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Here, uh, like we'll just like look into the equation. Now uh, that is, uh, you can say that rolling resistance. This is a generic equation. Uh, like where CRR, uh, like will be like some kind of. Dealing with only road surface and uh, based on like considering all the points, tire pressure and all the points, like it will be defined with some constant value. Okay. 
uh, we'll be using this as a equation for our calculation. Uh, these will be like uh, other alternative uh, we can use. Okay, so where they will be like involving the tire pressure, velocity, and all the terms. So these can be used as a dynamic uh, purposes. Like where your rolling resistance will be like varying with respect to the other parameters which are affecting. Okay, where this will be the constant throughout your uh, like journey, the value. Okay. Now, uh, like we'll be discussing about aerodynamic force. Okay, so uh, just give me a second, guys. Okay, so here, uh, like, we'll be dealing with the aerodynamic force, uh, like, as uh, some kind of resistance offered by the A uh, or your vehicle body. We can consider it as a like, or uh, some kind of aerodynamic force. Okay, here it is defined with some equation that is 0.5 into rho into A into C D into V square. So we look into the terms and how like they are going to affect your whole uh, parameter. Okay, yeah. So these are some alternative equations uh, like based on the wind flow. Like let's say like against the wind, will be like adding your wind velocity where you are along with the wind flow, you will be like subtracting because here, uh, the wind will be like supporting in terms of your vehicle motion. Yeah. So some of the parameters which will be affecting your um, aerodynamic force, as I discuss here, like 0.5 rho a c d v square. So here we'll start with like c d that is nothing but your drag coefficient. So it depends on like different shape. Okay, so having the different track coefficients, you can see uh, these particular shapes having very less track coefficients. Uh, that's why, like all the uh, like air structures, uh, car or vehicles, like they will be like streamlined half body or like completely like streamlined uh, based on again on the application point of view. Yeah, so. This is also like one of the parameter. Uh, we have to look into it. And one more like velocity. In the equation, uh, the the velocity is v square. Okay. So here, uh, like, let's say like aerodynamic force versus velocity. As the velocity increases, the aerodynamic force increases. Okay. Yeah. So and air density. So different region of your like uh, cities like having will be having some different air density. Again, it depends. Uh, like at the as the temperature decreases, there will be like higher air density. So where it is directly the air density is directly proportional to your force. So higher the uh, like lesser the temperature, higher will be the air density, and it's going to affect the aerodynamic force. Okay. So these are like some, again, uh, with respect to the equation. Okay. Just make a note of this equation, only this equation. Uh, just uh, leave about these alternative equations for now. Okay. And then uh, like about gradient. So here, uh, like whenever you find a vehicle um, going uphill condition, a uh, kind of like extra effort has to be uh, has to be applied because one of its uh, like weight uh, that is nothing but a force vector will be acting with an inclination which we produced here 
okay against your like uh, gravity you can say uh, with some inclined angle so that is going to affect the grade for your force uh, a kind of grade force for your vehicle yeah so here you can see uh, like a equation in the equation like we have mentioned plus or minus gvw into sin phi something okay so here the purpose of mentioning the plus or minus uh, like it is because of uh, let's say like if you are appeal condition there is a requirement of uh, extra effort then we have to add this particular term and if it if you are downhill condition like we have to subtract it okay yeah so now uh, like you might be thinking what exactly these terms are uh, like we look into in the further part okay so now uh, like about the acceleration here uh, like as we mentioned rolling force aerodynamic force and then what we like gradient force okay so now we are going to add acceleration force so let's say like uh, this is some kind of like object it is having some resistance uh, like aerodynamic force is something about like 30 and rolling is about something 20 so total resistance is about like 15 newton okay from this side if i want to move this object okay let's say like object on this direction okay whatever i'm marking here so i need to apply like uh, a force okay uh, let's say like if i applied 49 so it doesn't make any sense okay here the requirement is 50 so now if i sorry yeah now if i just try to apply here 50 then on the both sides uh, like it's get balanced so still there is there won't be anything a uh, movement then if i make it just uh, let's say like one this object on this direction it will start moving with some velocity if i start increasing let's say like i'll make it 59 so again it will move in this direction at some greater velocity so from this what we can consider that first uh, like in order to overcome your static condition that your motor has to supply some force oh, okay that is the initial requirements then the motor has to be ability uh, to take your vehicle with a varying velocity okay to the desired velocity uh, in considering all those parameters we have to size the motor yeah so once we like get to know about the total tractive force uh, like we will be estimating uh, wheel speed and the wheel torque okay so this should be like wr that is wheel radius and this is wheel speed so we, here we are just using the basic uh, engineering equation okay yeah so we will talk like uh, force into some let's say like displacement that is nothing but here Uh, like the term in the meter something we can get the newton meter okay yeah so next uh, like uh, about the transmission here we won't be dealing much with respect to the transmission side uh, like we already have like uh, some gear ratio defined but sizing this gear ratio again it will be a different domain okay we won't be like touching that particular part so we'll be like having some gear ratio uh, with that like we'll be going further to the motor side that uh, from wheel speed to the we'll get into the motor speed and we'll talk to the motor torque uh, with getting to know all the with having all the uh, parameters okay yeah 
so next uh, like we'll be like dealing with the motor sizing so here uh, like motor output power so we know the basic equation that is 2 pi nt upon 60 so we know that uh, like wheel speed and uh, like sorry motor speed and the motor torque should be motor speed and motor torque okay yeah so with this uh, like you can get to know the motor output power so this is your like transmission output of that is here in the wheel to wheel analysis whatever the output of blocks we we usually say that they are inputs in the real time okay so here the, whatever the inputs for this motor uh, transmission system that is motor speed and the motor torque will be feeding them uh, to the motor side that we can use make use of this basic equation to calculate the motor output power okay so once we get to know the motor output power there will be always some losses okay because of like lot of other uh, criteria like stray losses iron losses uh, rotor losses stator losses uh, like conversion losses okay uh, like all this uh, like has to be considered and uh, obviously it, it's going to be dissipated in terms of it okay so if we include that loss uh, like we'll get to know about the input power so with this in input power uh, we'll be like getting to know about battery power through the motor controller again this will be uh, having some uh, losses in the motor controller because of power electronic components a uh, lot of components will start dissipation the heat okay that is nothing but a loss if you include that we'll get to know what is battery requirement okay whatever you calculate right now it is motor output power and with the efficiency we can get to know motor input power so here uh, like efficiency it won't be a constant term in the real time it, it is going to be varied for for our calculation we'll be using a constant value okay uh, like efficiency will be like it's a function of motor speed motor torque and also a temperature okay yeah and then uh, like motor control efficiency if you know motor control efficiency like we'll calculate the battery power okay yeah so i'll just like give basic introduction uh, okay to this power train modeling approaches so here uh, like whatever the approach we are going to follow right that is with respect to the quadratic approach that is backward facing we call it is a wheel to well analysis and this is like something dynamic or the forward facing okay uh, here uh, like we'll be like supplying the known parameters let's say like torque side or like uh, power side values on the motor side so with that we'll be like help of some driver model we'll try to compare uh, the actual speed which is produced from the vehicle body and the reference speed uh, like either they are able, uh, this actual speed either is able to satisfy the reference speed with a given parameters uh, this is some kind of like complex for the beginners okay yeah so these are some approaches uh, like for our calculation we will be following this approach uh, like it is some pretty straight forward okay uh, that to on some uh, minimal level yeah so now uh, like i'll just like go to the excel sheet okay i hope like you guys have received this excel sheet or uh, if you don't it's fine uh, like you can like later rewatch the some course okay we have done yeah
so uh, like let me say that Okay. Oh, this is some kind of alert as you can. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. So let me introduce this general dress cycle that is standard dress cycle, NADC dress cycle, uh, like New European standard dress cycle. Okay. So with this, uh, like by saying this, like you can get to know on the y axis, it is mentioned with velocity term, and on the x axis, it is mentioned with the time data. So with respect to the different time data, like the velocity is getting varied. Okay. So we'll try to like calculate our motor sizing all the stuff with using these data. Okay. As a time cycle. So here, uh, like we'll just like try to put some parameters. Okay. Of your related to vehicle. So let me start here. So I'll just start with vehicle. I'll just give, try to give shorter names. Vehicle mass, driver mass. Okay. And then uh, like wheel radius. gradient angle CRR okay Pro that is nothing but your rear density I'll just say air then in shortcut frontal area F area CD. Okay. And uh, like transmission efficiency, motor efficiency, motor controller efficiency. Okay. So uh, like we were discussing some terms like uh, G V W or like something G V M, right? So G V M, uh, like which includes vehicle mass plus driver mass. Okay. So if you multiply to these terms with G, that is nothing but you are. 9.81 like you will end up with gvw okay so we'll just try to implement that thing here gvm and gvw okay before mentioning this one i'll mention g and gvw so vehicle mass Let's like take 111. Um, I have the parameters with me. Okay. Yeah. And KT has your driver mass. Uh, wheel radius uh, like 0. 0.1524. Gradient angle will consider zero. Air density, sorry, CRR, that is coefficient of rolling distance. 
we'll consider 0 0.015. Area density 1.22. Rental area 0.875. CD uh, like point two two okay transmission efficiency point eight five motor controller efficiency so motor efficiency point nine motor controller efficiency point eight five and for GVM as we mentioned it is a sum of mass and driver mass center so what I've done uh, like I'll just repeat the same thing okay 9.81 so here uh, I'll put a equal sign I'll select GVM and I will bring a multiplication sign and multiply with 9.81 and say enter. So this will be like your GVM value, which is in Newtons, okay? Yeah. So just try to put the units from your side, okay? Now, oh, like I'll just take two, these two tricycle, copy, and I'll paste it in next sheet. Okay, so first, uh, like the velocity will be in kilometer per hour. It'll, it'll, like whatever the equations, like calculation we are going to make, or the parameters, which are like they are with respect to the meter side. So we have to do the conversion. So I'll just mention well. So here, uh, kilometer per hour, thousand divided by three thousand six hundred. Okay, which has to be multiplied with velocity. Say enter. So you can use this point, okay, to like bring all to repeat all the oh, the whole thing to all the rows or if it doesn't work it's not working for me right now what i'll do is just drag to the end okay yeah so here we have calculated wheel speed So now, uh, like, what we'll do? Like, we'll start uh, with respect to the resistive forces. So first, I'll just write F arrow point five row. So, uh, like, you know. I will be like giving dollar symbol, okay? Just like uh, try to think why I'm trying to give the dollar symbol. Now uh, here I didn't use for the velocity. In a few minutes I'll explain that, like why the purpose of using the dollar symbol. And then I will select frontal area. Again, for this term also I'm going to give Multiply and CD okay and uh, like transmission efficiency okay it's not required. Uh, like 0.5 row CD frontal area and then the last term is velocity 
So this has to be velocity. It has to multiply for two times for the v square. Yeah. For this term, like I won't be using uh, dollar symbol. Just let me know why the purpose is that. If that doesn't work, just drag and put the results. So next, uh, like rolling force. So here, GVW multiplied with CRR. For both these terms, I have to add dollar symbol. Same term. Okay, now it's been, now it's working. And then, uh, like gradient, we have considered the inclination angle as like zero. So there is no purpose of adding the gradient force here. So what I'm going to do, like I'll jump into the acceleration force. Yeah, ACC. So you might be thinking like, how we can like go for estimating the acceleration force. So we'll be using basic equation that is M into A. So acceleration will be derived from velocity and mass, which is already we have. Okay, yeah. So here, uh, like I will be like going for something V2 minus V1 upon T2 minus T1 uh, to get to know what the acceleration is. Okay, so I'll just like try to take two numbers with something like G4 minus G2, okay? Multiply with mass, add dollar symbol, okay? Divided by, let's say like, G4 minus G2, uh, 2. Okay. Yeah. You might be thinking, like, how the 2 has come. It is nothing but T4, that is time, D4 minus D2. Okay. Yeah. Say enter. Yeah. So, this is what some, like, we are getting some data here. Okay. Now, uh, like, we'll be like dealing with next, uh, like, parameter, uh, like, not parameter. So, we'll be like trying to add all the forces. We can say that total tractive force. So, equal to F arrow plus roll plus acceleration. Okay. It has to be added and also um, there is no necessity of like dollar symbol here. Say enter. Yeah. So this will be like your total tractive force. Let me check with the graph. Okay. Now uh, like once we get to know total tractive force, we know the wheel radius, we can calculate wheel torque. So total tractive force multiplied with wheel uh, radius, that is here. Just try to bring dollar symbol. Okay. Say enter. This is our like wheel talk. So we know wheel speed and the wheel talk. Uh, here I mean I have not mentioned the gear ratio. So I just mentioned GR. That will be GR. Okay. 
that will be something like 7.8. Okay, so now like we can calculate like motor torque. So motor torque will torque divided by K ratio. So that is will be K ratio which has to be put under dollar symbol multiply with efficiency that is transmission efficiency and it has to be like put with dollar symbol close the bracket say enter So this is something about like motor talk. I will calculate motor speed. So here, uh, like for the motor speed, uh, like will be like the equation is uh, like gr into wheel speed. So gr is nothing but a gear ratio. Put dollar symbol. Multiply with or uh, like wheel speed. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think we have not calculated wheel speed. We'll calculate that one first. Okay. We'll just make some space here. Wheel speed. So the equation was pretty simple. Okay, 60 into velocity, which is in meter per second, divided by 2 pi, that is 3.142. And all like wheel radius, which has to be in gradient, say enter. Okay, yeah. So for wheel speed, oh, like we just multiply, oh, like multiply, sorry, wheel speed multiplied with K ratio. Just to be in dollar symbol. Say enter. Yeah. So now, like we got to know. The N and the T term that is nothing but your motor speed and the motor torque. So we can calculate motor power. Yeah. So equation is pretty simple like 2 pi into upon 60, 2 pi that is 3.142 NT that is speed and torque speed multiplied with torque. Divided by 60. Say enter. Yeah. So now, uh, like we have calculated motor power, that is output of your motor power. Now we have to calculate uh, motor input power. Okay. Motor input. So what I'm going to do. Uh, like motor power divided by efficiency that is motor efficiency okay yeah yeah this is what happens if i don't use dollar symbol yeah that's fine yeah uh, like if you know the motor input power we can calculate battery Power. Okay, so battery power. 
सो मोटर पावर डिवाइडेड बाय मोटर कंट्रोलर एफिशिएंसी से एस ओके सो फर्दर यू कैन लाइक गो फॉर डिराइविंग इट टू द बैटरी एनर्जी सो जस्ट वी नो द बेसिक इक्वेशन दैट इज सो लाइक एनर्जी इक्वल टू p into t so just trying to like integrate with respect to the time with this time we can get to know like what is the energy the total energy and with that total energy try to get distance of, from this velocity so you know like how to get the distance uh, <coughs> okay so again like by integrating the velocity into time so you will get the distance and then uh, like with the distance and the with the known total energy consumed you can go for estimating energy consumed per kilometer this is how like further you can derive it to you to it okay but i am going to restrict up to the battery power you can just like try out here i can just give the equations here for you to calculate the energy requirement uh, like power into t so it will be in joules try to convert into watt hour you can find that conversion value you can make use of this equation and then make use of like uh, distance to calculate distance v into t so we'll get the distance so e divided by d you will get energy consumed per kilometer yeah so this is about like uh, motor and battery sizing i'll just like uh, go through some points here like motor graphs okay speed and the power yeah so uh <clears throat> you might be thinking like um like how how come the like the graphs are like in this pattern or the trend okay or uh, like at higher the motor speed like there is like very much less torque on the motor side we should be knowing that characteristics of the curve of your motor so vehicle requirement torques and the motor characteristics torque and speed graph is similar trend initially the vehicle requirement torque is high as the speed increases the torque has to decrease okay so the motor also supplies the same thing okay initially the motor gives higher torque later as the speed of the motor increases it's going to give the less torque where the engine is completely different initially with the low torques in in mid of something like some of the speed it will give you Higher. This is engine, okay. Higher torques, and later again, like torques decreases, has higher at higher speeds. That is respect to the engine. That's why, like, we'll be using multiple gear ratios. Okay. Yeah. So, here, oh, uh, like, for the motor sizing, oh, uh, we should be knowing peak torque, nominal torque. the same on the max speed and the min minimum speed and the some kind of base speed and same with respect to the power okay that is uh, like motor power uh, that is peak power nominal power requirements so like how you can derive these terms from this graph okay so whenever uh, like if i talk about peak 
that you can like consider it from the acceleration performance graphs. Okay, like let's say like uh, the graph will be like completely different with respect to the NADC. Uh, it will be like from zero to five. It has some reach hundred. So this is what we define as a performance graphs. So we'll be using these graphs kind of uh, to derive the peak data and where nominal data will be derived from the city rights of the different combinations like high traffic, low traffic, and the medium traffic kind of. Okay. So yeah, uh, like different approaches we can follow to derive the nominal talks and the peak talks. So if you talk about like nominal talk, that is, which is continuous requirement, we can also go for plotting the histogram. So you can see the number of occurrences of talk term. But by usually now I can like say that uh, six, uh, like something five and six can be used for our nominal requirements. So where most of our talk requirements is covered, we can just like neglect these peak talks if the duration of this stink time, what we call, is very less, we can just neglect this one. Okay. And the peak data can be uh, obtained from the acceleration performance. Okay. And if we talk about the speed, like at this point, the velocity is very high. So the motor speed is like giving higher RPMs. Okay. So that's why, like, even on the power side, you're getting higher power. At higher RPMs, because uh, if you if you look into the equation, that is two pi nt upon sixty, n is directly proportional to the power. Okay, yeah. So here, the like max speed can be like considered as like ten thousand RPM something, eleven, and the nominal like something like. 7,000 to 6,000, okay, by visually. And the same, we are going to like go for motor power. So motor power, like peak terms, we can again going to get it from like performance graph for city rights, like considering the nominal values, we can just use uh, like city rights, okay. So let's say like 2.5 watts something for our nominal selection. Okay, so uh, this is just a kind of sizing made for one single tricycle. So when we are like trying to derive it to some real time vehicle or real time selection, we have to do for different drive cycle condition. Even with the real vehicle, we have to go for test drives and collect some data and uh, that drive cycles. Okay, and we have to implement and like look for the results. So looking looking into for different drive cycles and coming into some conclusions. That will be like uh, a method you can say. Okay. Yeah. So this is about like motor sizing something. So if you have any uh, like questions with respect to this part, we can discuss. Or like only with respect to the equations or something sizing related. Okay. Again, the battery power selection and uh, like related to the battery, C rates of the battery, the current rates, or like again, it's a different domain. Okay, like completely entire entity. Yeah. So, Uh, we can share you the recording or uh, like if you have like enrolled in the webinar or uh, like you can get that particular um, in your dashboard okay about the recording uh, here if you're talking about the standards right so again uh, like it is diversified like 
uh, like to the component level okay so let's say like if i i'll just take one example like battery right so i might be thinking in, the, in that way or uh, just let me know if i'm correct or not so let's say like if you are manufacturing some battery that has some protocols has to be followed okay uh, let's say like some eic standards some ul standards uh, like has to be uh, like applied so that that has to be like um, passed okay so that we can say that it is some ip rated battery S something in that way okay so it is something like related to the if you talk about ev specification so uh, like you have to like talk about the component uh, level yeah so again like it's uh, so if we start talking about the standards like there are many uh, like a lot of testing has to be done for the battery and uh, like let's say like penetration test um like drop test or like if you talk about the mechanical side vibration tests okay so like it has to overcome all the frequencies so that we can consider with some um like conclusion or uh, that the battery has to be able to perform proper way even on those vibrations even after some drop test kind of okay it's completely again a different thing uh we are done okay you can just get it here let me put a graph here yeah i hope you can see you can get to know like the power coming yeah the purpose of giving the dollar symbol right uh here like let's say like this is some some kind of like constant term we are using right right now right so uh like these are some like continuously varying so if i put some equation if i use some terms here right of some like where it has to be continuously fed to every cell equation of equation which is in every cell of your sheet uh this value has to be put uh, like let's say like only 1.22 is some kind of constant term it has to be put to every cell so it has to be constantly used throughout our calculation of all the rows for that purpose we are using dollar symbol yeah definitely uh, like we have like already shared and also like a download option in the Oh, uh, like chat box. Okay. So as I mentioned, to calculate energy, uh, like you can just like I already mentioned the equation. So e equal to p into t. This time will be nothing but this time time data. So you'll we'll get to know like energy. It will be in some kind of joules. so further you have to use the conversion factor for whatever yeah okay uh, i can go a bit because this is not a agenda of that course here uh, let me put some part here something related vehicle model something and this is with respect to battery okay so let me put it here yeah so uh, like battery uh, now like whatever we calculated we considering that battery is only responsible for traction force okay so uh, let's say like if you talk about the car level uh, like something like four wheelers something like a bus you can say 
they uh, like the other param the battery has to be responsible for other sector let's say like um, a kind of hvac system okay uh, like uh, like it has to like maintain the conditioner air within a cabin kind of uh, there again the battery has to supply the power to the hvac system where it will be involving the compressor and like all the stuff heat exchangers okay so the motor has to be run for that motor uh, supply the battery has to give okay that is the one part and the other auxiliary systems like battery cooling bad, uh, motor cooling uh, that also has to be included because uh, we know the batteries that uh, like the optimal operating range somewhere like 35 something like 30 to 40 something okay it is different with the different manufacturers okay this value is going to vary vary so here uh, like it has to be maintained within this temperature range so that uh, like they will be like able to perform well uh, a kind of you can say a good efficiency so for that the heating has to be oh, sorry the cooling has to be maintained in even in the cold condition you cannot discharge your cell at very less temperature so heating has to be provided so all these auxiliary systems so if you include auxiliary systems and along with your like traction requirements the battery is responsible for all these systems yeah uh, here uh, like we have the attitude also have role in battery performance if yes okay uh like <coughs> let me come from okay so we have some like courses you can make use of the provided by the disciples uh you can use those course and you can implement the HVAC system to your power train and get to know like final energy consumption kind of. Um, you can if you want to like if you want detailed about like EV cooling systems all the stuff uh, we can show you some uh, like courses just give me a second I'll just stop recording I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm just showing the right uh, course. Uh, Rahul and some other people have asked. Let me show you that course. Okay. We do have that course, just uh, like, yeah. Uh, hey, Nick, uh, the course is about uh, like HVAC system and how the other auxiliary systems modeling. Yeah. Can you just like, Think some okay, just give me a second.
uh, hands on session for BMS. Okay, can you organize hands on BMS on session? Uh, like, yeah, we'll definitely uh, like do that. Uh, like in upcoming schedule, like we have planned, uh, like BMS function that is BMS integration um, to the vehicle and to the battery. Okay. Oh, uh, like, yeah, that can be done. Measures. I think you can find it here. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, We'll just provide you the link. Uh, you can just like wait some seconds or like some minutes. You can directly log into that particular course. Yeah. The master course, I, I can show you the content. Um, okay, it's not mentioned here also. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll definitely get the link. Um, yeah, I will, our admin will take care of those things. We'll just, uh, like, here's some, into, um, yeah, we'll definitely give some links over the chat box. Just wait for some minutes. Okay. So here, uh, like as I mentioned about uh, master course, right? Uh, like powertrain design validation. So just now, like in the course, we just did some Excel sheets and we did some calculations that some for approach like wheel to wheel analysis. Uh, again, you are going to get a deeper concepts related to the powertrain. Um, one thing what we are going to work out here, like here, like you will be trained with respect to the model based design. That is the one part. Okay. So you will be using the MATLAB and Simulink mod, uh, like for as a tool. Okay. Then, uh, doing the powertrain, the whole system, including auxiliary systems, and like different type of powertrain approaches uh, like can be done okay uh, like in this part of the powertrain course and the third uh, we talk about uh, the real time testing so uh, let's say like uh, you have done some powertrain uh, for let's say like two wheeler system itself uh, like you got some uh, energy or you you did some or motor uh, sizing and all the stuff, uh, battery sizing. You should be knowing, right? Uh, are they correct? Uh, like, are we getting the right data? Uh, are we reaching with the real time tested data? Uh, that we are going to do. That is nothing but your validation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in this course, uh, definitely, like, we will be undergoing uh, from basic to the master level, okay? Uh, including all the stuff like uh, tools, like let's say like MATLAB, Simulink, and state flow, okay? And also like based uh, on some model MBD standards we'll be dealing with. And these are some uh, courses okay uh, like quastatic approach in detail that is in the simulink dynamic approach uh, like I, I just show some schematic layout in on the presentation that is uh, like, let's say like we will be using some driver model and we'll be uh, like giving 
the with data from our side and we are just seeing that actual speed is able to uh, match with our like um, reference speed some kind of okay so like the different powertrain approaches we are going to do and we are going to verify these powertrains with the real time test data we are going to do the testing with a dac system and collecting the data and coming back and validating the models and region modeling okay advanced motor uh, when we are doing the motor sizing we just went uh, like using the mechanical equation okay so we 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 know that uh, the power supply to the motor uh, like will be uh, like will be in three phase okay so where uh, a controller come into play where it will convert a dc to ac a kind of inverter it will act as so there uh, like we can go for um, sizing the exact uh, advanced motor like what are the current requirements to the motor voltage uh, like three phase two phase all the stuff okay and transmission sizing will be following some optimizing algorithms optimization algorithms a linear search based optimization so we will be implementing and deriving it to a, a transmission value so that uh, it should be fit for our vehicle uh, and also compatible with whatever the sized components okay yeah and the lithium cell modeling and the battery management systems Um, yes, Vinay. Uh, I think the link has put in. Okay. Yeah. Just let me check with that link. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this this is actually the course thing. Uh, like, you have to go for request for content, and you will get to know like what exactly inside the HVAC system and the modeling. Uh, uh, these are like paid courses. Uh, like we only uh, provide the systems related to automotive, like courses related to automotive. Okay. Uh, no, uh, the T value is is going to like. Uh, the time data like not single uh, like one two three up to thousand one eighty values okay yeah i think it's clear for round any simulation part uh, it's come like 50 percent is simulation 50 percent is practical uh shrinivas uh like will be like mastered in simulation part and also with the practical Okay. Yeah. Can you arrange any jobs for experienced person? Uh, that you have to talk with our admin team. Uh, like they will, uh, like definitely help you out. Uh, we can take your name, Nishas, and we'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, just uh, like you can take a certification link. Uh, our team will provide you a certification link in the chat box. You can just download. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just, just just stay for some few minutes. Uh, we will provide our team will provide the certification link in the group or uh, in the chat box. Yeah. Let me stop sharing the screen. Yes, I have shared you the. Share you my email ID. So if you have any queries, you can uh, write a mail to me. And regarding the certificate, I'll just share you the link to generate your certificate. Okay, oh. I'll share you the link to generate your certificate. I'll just walk you through how to generate your certificate. Just give me a moment. 
and I've shared you a Google form. Please, it's a feedback form. Please do fill it. It'll help us to improve more and come up with new topics as well and uh, take your suggestions. Mm, regarding the certificate, uh, Krishna, can I take over? Um, sure, no issues. Yeah. Uh, I have shared you a link in the chat box. Please click on the link and you'll find yourself uh, a button called enroll for free. You just have to click on that and then uh, log in with your registered mail ID. Uh, then you'll enter into a course, then read through the content. Uh, it's all self-explanatory. Uh, from there, you can generate your certificates. Can I use the certificate? Yes, you can use it. Rather yes, you can use it. Thank you, Jayesh. Vinayak, uh, something like to Srinivas, uh, share some details about design simulation cooling. Yeah. Uh, like, you, if you're talking about, uh, is he talking about like course or just like, yeah. Srinivas, just let us know in the chat box. Okay, you are talking about the course. Uh, like definitely we'll provide, uh, we'll come back to you. Sure. You can make, a, we'll make a note of your name. And for the people who are logged in from or joined in from the YouTube, I have shared you the links in the comment section. You can find the link there as well to generate your certificates under Google. Yeah, thank you, Rahul. Yes, please generate your certificates now itself. I'll be there still. 7 p.m. Uh, so that you can generate your certificates. If you find any difficulty, please let me know. And Krishna, is there any other questions remaining to take? Um, no. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for attending the session. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you for the session. Have a great weekend. Uh, Sudarshan Yen, unable to generate certificate. Yeah, Sudarshan, uh, please let me know. What's the difficulty of facing? Uh, sure, guys, I'll let you know how to generate your certificates. You just have to click. Uh, I've mentioned the link now, so you just have to click on the enroll for free. Uh, I have already logged in, so it will directly go to the course page where you will be finding the link to generate your certificate. And then there is an instruction to check whether your names are correct in your profile or not. If your names are not correct, please go to the profile section and correct your name and then come back and do the same process. Same thing is explained here. This is where your name, the name on this certificate will be the fetched from the profile itself. So please go and check once if the names are correct or not. If you have not filled the entire uh, fields, please fill the fields from there in the profile section. Click on complete and continue. And here there is a few questions, I means there is some information provided. Please read through this. Uh, it explains about what's the importance of sharing it on LinkedIn. Then go click on complete and continue. Then We'll go to dashboard. Sorry. Just give me a moment, guys. I think there is some mistake. Yeah, I got through. I just kept you know, just a second. I'll check with this.
So I think there is some error with the link. Uh, I'll do one thing. I'll just share you the links to generate your certificates uh, or your emails. Uh, please check uh, by tomorrow morning your registered emails. Uh, you'll be getting the link there. And there will be a detailed, uh, I mean, what to say, like how to generate detailed content on how to generate your certificate. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience cost. Yeah. We'll be sending you the mail, uh, link to them, to your registered mail IDs. Thank you. Have a good evening and happy weekend to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Danazan. Thank you for holding back. And yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Please keep following us on all our social media platforms uh, for future boot camps or webinars. Something like that. Thank you.